I'm Emily Everett and I'll be showing you how to assess the cranial nerves. The purpose of each of the following tests is to see whether or not the cranial nerve has been damaged and if any of these tests turn out positive, then that is a medical emergency and the patient needs to be transported to a hospital immediately. The first cranial nerve is the olfactory. It's a sensory nerve and its function is olfaction or smell. Have the patient smell something you give them with their eyes closed and then tell you what they smell. The second cranial nerve is the optic nerve. It's sensory and its function is vision. Test their close-up peripheral vision by holding up a certain amount of fingers an arm's length away from them and asking them how many they see. Assess their vision from far away using a Snellen eye chart. The third cranial nerve is the oculomotor. It's a motor nerve and its functions are pupillary reactions, elevation of the upper eyelid, eye adduction, and downward rolling. The fourth cranial nerve is the trochlear. It's a motor nerve and its function is upward eye rolling. The sixth cranial nerve is the abducens. It's a motor nerve and its function is eye movement. While testing these nerves, make sure that the pupils are equal and reactive to light. Using a pen light, test the pupillary reactions of each eye individually. Using the tip of your pen, trace an H and a box around it in the air and then bring the tip of the pen into their nose to see if their eyes adduct. The fifth cranial nerve is the trigeminal. It's both sensory and motor. Its sensory function is sensation in the skin of the face and head and its motor function is mastication or chewing. Have the patient close their eyes and bite down as you palpate their cheeks and temples. Ask them if they have feel any pain. The seventh cranial nerve is the facial nerve. It's both sensory and motor. Its sensory function is taste and its motor function is the movement of the facial muscles. Ask the patient to smile, frown, raise their eyebrows, close their eyes really tight, open their mouth, and then place something in their mouth. Ask them what they taste. The eighth cranial nerve is the vestibulocochlear or auditory nerve. It's sensory and its function is hearing and equilibrium. Have the patient close their eyes, snap in each ear, and tell them to point to where they heard the noise. Have them perform the heel-to-toe balance test for 30 seconds to test their equilibrium. The ninth cranial nerve is the glossopharyngeal. It's both sensory and motor. Its sensory function is taste, and its motor function is swallowing, using the pharyngeal muscles. The tenth cranial nerve is the vagus. It's both sensory and motor. Its sensory function is taste, while its motor functions are gag reflex and moving the muscles of the pharynx and larynx. Ask the patient to smile, say ah, and then use a tongue depressor to elicit a gag reflex. The 11th cranial nerve is the spinal accessory. It's a motor nerve and its function is movement of the head and shoulders. Tell the patient to push their shoulders up and resist as you try to push them down. The 12th cranial nerve is the hypoglossal. It's a motor nerve and its function is the movement of the tongue. Have the patient stick out their tongue and wiggle it from side to side as you observe for symmetry. The cranial nerve's acronym goes OOO to touch and feel very good velvet such heaven. And the first letter of each of those words corresponds with each of the cranial nerves and it helps you memorize the name. Another acronym helps you memorize which cranial nerves are sensory, motor, or both. It goes, sister says marry money, but my brother says big brains matter more. The first letter of each of those words tells you about each cranial nerve. 